There are many people who enjoy to discredit Islam and the thing that they enjoy to do most is to point fingers at the marriage of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and Aisha anha, and they label this as an act of ped Now I find this uh, to be quite an astounding claim and uh, what's more baffling is the fact that people actually believe this criticism. The reason I say this is because number one, by definition, pedophilia involves someone pre-pubescent. And the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him explicitly prohibited any type of consummation with someone who is pre-pubescent. And he himself waited until Aisha Anha was of the age of puberty to consummate that marriage. The second reason is the fact that perhaps we have just simply forgotten about history. We live in a luxurious area today where we could spend 25 years fooling around doing whatever we want, get married at the age of 30, and in the age of 40, then we can start establishing our life and expect to even live further than that. Yet in the era of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, where the average lifespan was 35 years of age, you can't really impose that same type of standard. If you were to say that you cannot marry until the age of 18, that population population would be unable to sustain itself. And the fact that you and I are sitting here today and humanity is not extinct means that young marriages were very commonplace. It wouldn't take long for us if we looked in our own lineage to find someone who married under the age of 18 and many people even had kids before the age of 18. And this made sense from a biological perspective as well. Puberty is essentially your body signaling to you that you are ready to start a family. And so even in the UK, as recent as 200 years ago, people could get married as soon as the age of 12. And this just goes to show that this was a widespread practice among all people of all times other than ours. So in modernity, we have chosen to go away from the biological model, which the people of the past used, and to create arbitrary days where you can get married. So if you go and do a simple Google search, the United States, for example, has 18. A lot of countries do 18, but some do like 19, some 21. And some go below that. Some go to 16, 14, 12. And so the fact that the days and the morality that we have chosen today now is arbitrary, it means a couple of things. Number one is that one nation's law-abiding citizen is another nation's So for example, in the United States, if someone gets married at the age of 18, and then go to Puerto Rico, for example, where the age is 21, that marriage would be considered underage. Whereas another country that has the age of 16 might come here and they might be considered underage. And the fact that these standards are not rooted in anything biological or physical uh, makes it very strange when people use these to judge the rest of humanity and even the rest of human history. That is something that I find completely abnormal. The other thing that we have to realize here is that the effect of these laws has not really changed our biology that much. So we still go through puberty and we still have needs. However, the age of marriage is now pushed back. Therefore, you have to suffice not on long-term solutions like marriage, but on short-term solutions like pornography, dating, one-night stands, and OnlyFans. And I would argue that these are things that are not just harmful for individuals and societies, but it's harmful for marriage as an institution because why would a person go through the liability and risk the liability of a marriage when they could simply go to these easy, risk-free alternatives that basically are providing the same thing. Now we can talk about the harms of dating and things like that in a completely separate video if you would like. Let me know in the comments below. But obviously the lawmakers who put these into place did not do so maliciously. They were trying to protect young people from making bad decisions. So there are two primary cultural differences that I see that have made us do things the way that we do things as opposed to the people of the past. So number one is the fact that we are more independent than the people of the past, right? So we want to make our own decisions. We want to pick our own spouses. Whereas in the past, especially for young women, there was a mechanism or a safeguard put in place where the father would vet out her future potentials to make sure that they were not taking advantage of her or they were going to be abu abusive or anything like that. Because the father essentially has more years, he is wiser, and he's a man, so he knows what other men think like. And the second difference is that the current societies that we live in have heavy Christian influence. And within Christianity, a lot of the sects do not believe in divorce. So once you made a decision, whether good or bad, you were stuck with it. Whereas in Islam, there is divorce and it can be initiated by both the men and the women. And in the original Islamic community, divorce didn't really even have a strong stigma. So a woman who got divorced 
would essentially wait the four months and 10 days to make sure that the paternity of any potential pregnancies is preserved from her previous husband. And then just about immediately, people would be asking for her hand in marriage. And so this was a mechanism put in place just in case either the wali makes a mistake or a guy who is marrying a girl would make a mistake and they need to get out of that relationship. But the other question that people do have about the marriage of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was not just the age of Aisha Ra'ta'ana, but the age difference. Whereas the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was significantly older than her. And that seems strange to us in our modern context. What you have to understand is that in the early Islamic community, being single was not seen as a good thing. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, whoever can afford to get married should get married. And whoever has no reason to delay should not delay. Because the more single people you have in a community, the more sexual tension there is. And that tension leads to the demand for all of these other immoral things, right? Fornication, adultery, prostitution, pornography as it is in modern day. These are things that the Islamic community wanted to avoid by making sure that the majority of people were married. And the way they did this was they didn't stigmatize women and their marital history, so people could be married multiple times in the past or have children, as is the case with the Prophet's marriage to Khadija Raita'anha, who was married twice before him, and she had children from her marriages, and it was his first marriage, and she was 15 years older than him, yet he married her because she was a noble and good woman, and she would make a good spouse and a good mother. And so what they were really looking at wasn't age, wasn't past or history or anything like that. They saw a single adult, with good character as someone who would be a great potential spouse. And in that society, there was only child and adult. The concept of adolescence and teenage years and stuff like that simply didn't exist. This is a modern invention of our times. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him chose to marry Aisha Raita'anha because she was from a good family. She herself was of good and noble character and she was an eligible adult, and that was all the criteria they really needed. Likewise, this is why Aisha Raza'ana approved of the marriage with the Prophet, peace be upon him, and her parents also agreed to marry her to him, because he was a noble person who would take care of her, who would keep her happy, and at the end of the day, they were two adults within their respective society who were in a loving and healthy relationship with each other, and they were both pleased with it. So that should really be the end of that. So... I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, let me know in the comments down below. I'll try to get back to them as soon as possible. Thank you guys for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.